Welcome to Top Gun Options Market Situation Report. My name is Matthew Buckley, call sign Wiz, the primary model portfolio manager here at Top Gun Options. And what are we seeing in the market today? Seeing the market pull back. Why? Who knows? Uh, you know, I love Market Watch. Well, there's a bear scare in the air. Why? Mm, uh, who knows? Well, uh, the IMF is meeting over in Tokyo. They came out with a rather lackluster report uh, on the world growth uh, for their world growth forecast. They're looking at about 3.3 percent, which is down 0.2 percent for 2012, and then 3.6 percent for next year, which is down 0.3 percent from their uh, uh, their previous forecast. Okay, Wiz, what the hell does that have to do with anything? Well, guess what, folks? 2011. The world saw 3.8% growth. And in 2010, you ready for this one? Brace yourself. 5.1% growth. So 3.3% for 2012 and 3.6% for 2013? Really? And and uh, the journal does a great job covering this. They, they These numbers are based on two things that have to go absolutely right, which I'm telling you right now will not. Their two assumptions are, uh, you know, Eurozone members are going to do what they say they're going to do. They're going to live up to their austerity uh, measures. They're going to increase taxes. All 17 member nations are going to get their their stuff in one sock, sold. The other lofty assumption is there's no U.S. fiscal cliff on January 1st. Double sold. Something is going to happen on January 1st, folks. Even if our clown car Congress, our lame duck Congress comes back, they have five weeks to settle four or five of the biggest financial issues facing this young republic since its inception. And if you believe that they're going to solve all of them, you also believe last week's unemployment numbers. And you need to go bury your money in a Folgers can in the yard. Yes, I'm old enough to know what a Folgers can is. Uh, because it's just it's not going to happen, folks. They might extend the Bush tax cuts for six months to a year or blah, blah, blah. But $60 billion in defense cuts are still going to hit. Tens upon tens of thousands of defense contractors who drive pickup trucks to the Lockheed Martin plant in Fort Worth are going to get laid off. Seattle, laid off. So the fiscal cliff in some shape or form might not be a cliff, but it's going to be a dive. So the IMS numbers, in my opinion, are overly rosy. Speaking about unemployment numbers from last week, and this is, um, the, we have got to talk about this, folks. The, if, if you're a trader at Topkin Options and you trade uh, with me or, or some of my traders or in some of our trading services, you know we talk about the lie number, right? The official unemployment rate is known as U3, and that's the lie number. Uh, you know, 8.2, 8.2, 8.3, 8.1, and then we saw... The biggest drop in 29 years, folks, in unemployment. Down from you know 8.1% down to 7.8%. Seriously? You believe that? But if you trade a top gun, you know that the real unemployment number is called U6. And it's 14.7%. And even that's low. That doesn't take into account people who've thrown up their hands and have gone on Social Security disability on food stamps or whatever. But folks, this is an absolute lie. Are you kidding me, Wiz? Our, our, our government lie to us? <laughs> folks, two of the senior uh, economists at the BLS are Obama uh, donors. Search it yourself, folks. When you donate to a, uh, a candidate, uh, your name becomes part of the public record and how much you donate it. And guess what? Two of the folks that make up uh, coming up with this number the media and politician number are Obama supporters. They were in 2000 uh, in the last election and in this election as well. Hmm. Could you imagine the shit fit that our media would be going through? Still from last week to today, Christopher Matthews' head would be exploding. MSNBC would be having 24-7 coverage if this were George Bush. A month before the election, the unemployment rate drops to 7.8%. Now, Jack Welch, former CEO of GE, uh, who's a 500-pound brain, folks, you know, immediately came out and said, right, it's a lie, It's and uh, this is manipulated. And, of course, the media is like, oh, <laughs> conspiracy theorist, put your tinfoil hat on, uh, Jack Welch, and go somewhere else. Really? Folks, since 2008, if you don't know what LIBOR is, LIBOR, search this one, Barclays, <clears throat> yeah, LIBOR Barclays scandal. Since 2008, Barclays has been manipulating the LIBOR rate, the London Interbank Offered Rate, the rate that banks charge each other to loan money. And guess what? 
You have a credit card. You have a home loan. You have an auto loan. You've been robbed for the past four, five years. Tim Geithner knew about it as the head of the New York Fed, by the way, but I digress. <clears throat> so if they, they, some heavy somewhere in coats and ties, can manipulate the LIBOR rate and impact interest rates around the globe and into your house, you think it's below somebody to manipulate the unemployment rate? It's ridiculous. With that much of a historic drop, 29, nearly three decades, folks, you would think the media would still be covering it. They're not. You know why? Because they know it's not true. So, folks, take that unemployment rate. Believe it or don't believe it, if you will. It doesn't matter to me. I know how I'm going to trade it. Um, and let's talk about Q3 earnings. Alcoa reports after the close today. Why? You're going to get a free drink at a cocktail party because of this, so you owe me a, a free drink. Why does Alcoa report first? And for all of you who just said, well, there are symbols AA and, and they go first, you all owe me a drink. That's not true. It's because their former CEO wanted to go first. It has nothing to do with their stock ticker, so go earn a free drink off somebody in a bar. Uh, but anybody, folks, uh, anyway, the expectations for Q3 earnings could not be any lower. And what's that mean? They're actually going to be okay. Seasonally adjusted, folks, for the past couple years, even every company, including historically Apple, who have underreported, have overdelivered to the tune of about two to three percent. So even though FedEx, Caterpillar, Norfolk Southern uh, ha have all kind of pre-reported uh, that hey, we're going to take it in the chin, guess what? You can't hit the ball over the net, lower the net. And that's what we're seeing a lot of companies who are pre-reporting uh, are doing, are, are lowering the net. So um, be careful. I'm, I'm more looking at a Q4 kind of implosion than, uh, than anything else, uh, not a Q3. It's going to be bad, but it's not going to be bad as expected. Like I said, the market's taking a little bit of a chin today, uh, which is great for us. The VIX showing signs of life. Love it. We have a couple uh, positions on the VIX on today. It was up as high as, um, well, it's, it's kind of near the highs of the day. It was up 65 nearly 7% today. And we have some great uh, trades on the VIX on that are uh, nice, shiny, and green today. And some uh, you know positions on uh, gold uh, and some other positions. We have a huge, very bearish positions in, in some of the other, uh, in the SPX and some other uh, uh, NRVXXs that are, taking advantage of the world going to hell in a handbasket, whether it's the election, the fiscal cliff, potential war between Turkey and Syria, and Turkey's a NATO member, so we'd be involved uh, to an uh, Israeli strike, uh, to the Grexit and, and Spanish issue. So we have a lot going on here at Topkin Options. Make sure you join us uh, this uh, Friday, I believe. I'm going to be doing a live trading session, uh, and you can join us, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll have the video redirect to that page. I'm going to do a live trading this session to talk about uh, this Friday to talk about earnings and what's uh, coming up on the calendar because folks when you take a look at uh, economic events that uh, are on the radar there's really not that much this week uh, and the earnings I'm going to be watching this week are Costco tomorrow uh, and then uh, Wells Fargo and JP Morgan on Friday so we got a higher end retailer uh, with Costco not really you know, Coach or Burberry or, or one of those. But, you know, Costco's a, a nice barometer of the economy. How many 72-inch plasma flat screens are being carried out uh, and, and, and being put in cars, you know? Uh, or how many people are going in there for chips and salsa and still walking out paying 500 bucks, 600 bucks? That's what I usually do. Wife sends me there to get a couple things small, and I walk out with, uh, you know, a case of wine and, uh, you know, tires. Um, so Costco will be interesting. J.P. Morgan will be interesting. And so will uh, Wells Fargo. Okay? So a lot going on here at Gun Options. Like I said, join us this Friday for a couple of live trading sessions so you can get my sense on what's going on with Q3 earnings. And also you can get my sense uh, uh, of what actionable trades I've put in the model portfolio to uh, hedge us against the world ending. And also to help us on uh, in case the second coming happens tomorrow. And folks, on a market, uh, on a day when the market's down 81 uh, points, spoos are down you know, nearly 11, this is what your portfolio needs to be uh, looking like. Nice and hedged. Bright greens, light greens, grays, some pinks, and some reds. That's how you know you got a nice uh, hedge portfolio. And like I said, uh, our performance in the model portfolio, let's just take a look at September. Uh, how do we do... Um, 
let's do uh, September and just take a look at our performance in September. And we use the Trade Monster platform uh, here at Top Gun Options. You can open a free paper trading account by going to trademonster.com slash TGO and you can uh, play along uh, with us in our live trade briefs uh, and had a great live trade brief this morning, about two hours of live trading and adding, look at that folks, on about $50,000 in uh, in haircut, in model portfolio haircut in our paper trading account, uh, we made about 41 grand. Let's just round down and say 40 grand. Um, and a lot of these red positions like SPX, uh, USO, SDS, uh, VXX are hedges. So they need to be red when the market's going up, okay? But guess what? These are going to flip-flop around into the green, uh, and that's what hedges are supposed to do. They act like bilge pumps. All right, I uh, got a coaching session due here, so I got to run. Get this out to you folks. Make sure you join me on Friday for our live trading sessions. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge.